Thank you. The, prog the progressive think tank, Growth and Justice, recommended last year that the state of Minnesota set a policy goal of increasing the number of college graduates it produces per year by 50% by the year 2020. Would you as governor adopt that goal? If you would, how would you propose to achieve it? And if you would not, what policy goal would you set for public higher education? John Aldrich, your first. As an educator, that's a, that's a tough one to deal with. Uh, but I would be opposed to following through with a program that says we're going to have this many college graduates at, at this time certain. And the reason for that is just very obvious. Uh, uh, if you believe, as I do, that we're in a jobless recovery, we're likely to be in a jobless recovery for some time. So to promote that type of a policy at this particular time, I think is treading on dangerous, dangerous ground. Uh, and I would look for other alternatives. I believe in education. I believe strongly in it. But that type of a policy would not sit very well with me. I could be persuaded, but someone would have to show me how that really might work out. Today, I wouldn't work on that one at all. Tom Rukavina. Laurie, as you know, I chair the Higher Education and Workforce Committee. Uh, I don't know if it's a, that is an attainable goal at 50%, but one thing we have to do is realize, you know, my parents as first-generation Americans were trained and got a good education, and we have to do that for the next group of immigrants that have come to our country, and we have to make it affordable. Uh, we've, I've set up scholarships at the university and uh, that direct both middle-income uh, students and their families and also uh, are just directed towards uh, poor and uh, other students like that. But we have to make education affordable because I think of the story about Norman Borlaug being turned away from the University of Minnesota, the man who fed the world. And, you know, there are probably thousands and thousands of Norman Borlaugs out there in our society here in Minnesota that we are right now depriving from attending a higher education institution because we have been just cutting and cutting and this year it looks like we're going to be cutting again and it's not right. Phil Herwig. I don't know as I can answer I don't I don't know as I can answer that question in a minute. There's a lot of things. Number one, we don't need to be paying these high costs that we're pay to the state or the university system like Robert H. Brunick, president. He has a benefit package that's almost double that of the President of the United States. $739,000 last year. We're paying three, 214 administrative people over a quarter million dollars a year. And you know, these people don't even read their own documents in this state. The Charter of the University, Section 12, is a promise to the people of Minnesota when the, the university permanent fund can, in determine in the, uh, in the, the, uh, by uh, decision of the Board of Regents, that it can permit free tuition, then the state should provide it. And that comes out of earnings from the university fund. And if we dismantle some of this welfare system that we've got for people that can work, put those dollars as a permanent endowment into the university permanent fund. Okay. Uh, Marty Seifert. It's not the job of the governor or the legislature to dictate what free people should be deciding. And so I think we need to make sure that the marketplace in the 21st century reflects exactly where the people want to go. Now, in the state of Minnesota, we have opportunities to have more affordable higher education. I've worked in higher ed as an admission counselor. We have wonderful programs like the post-secondary enrollment option program where you can get students through college faster that have that initiative. We also should be able to get a fourth of the four-year degree online that is much more affordable than the old way of doing things in the 18th century but moving into the 21st century. The best form of financial aid is keeping our tuition affordable. So if you work hard and you play by the rules, in the state of Minnesota, you ought to be able to go to college. That is my number one goal when it comes to higher education. Out of the 50 states for two-year tuition, we are number one for expense. And I want to make sure that my Board of Trustees appointees understand that and get us out of the top 10. That affordability will make us competitive in the 21st century. Okay, Paul Thiessen. 
I think that we do have to go after that goal. Uh, we know that our job over the next decade is to be rebuilding this state, and we need to rebuild it in a way that works for ordinary Minnesota uh, families. And we haven't been paying attention to that. And the best way we can accomplish that, and that's what's underlying this growth and justice study, is their analysis of the fact if you have a higher education degree, you're going to make a salary you can live on, and if you don't, you're going to be struggling. And that's why this is so important to us. So how we go about doing that, I think that we have to make sure that the paths to get there are, are varied and open to a lot of people. We can't just be thinking about kids coming out of high school. We have a lot of non-traditional students, older folks, that, older people that want to retrain and get to, uh, into a different field of work. That's a place that we have to focus on, and I have some policy directives to go in that direction. But the affordability is the key. And not only getting affordable college, but keeping them here, keeping our kids here. And so I would say that if you go to school in Minnesota and you stay, return to your hometown, you ought to get a tax credit to pay off and help you afford your tuition repayments. That's a win-win for Minnesota. Okay.